let's go ahead and scoot over to everyone else. Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Let's scoot over to everyone else where Kretha and Calder and Meepo are hanging out near this door. Um, Calder, are you planning on going into the door? Or are you no, staying going, there no, in I'm the, planning in the on, uh, My intent is to stay in one place and begin the process of resting because I've gone through two big fights as a sorcerer. I'm out of magic. I need to rest. That's fair. Uh, what's That's fair. what's what's Kretha up to? Hey, looks like there's something interesting behind that door, don't you think? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. yes, whatever, definitely something whatever, interesting. Whatever is interesting behind the door can wait until after I've had a nap. That is true. This is true. Nap, sleep, rest is always good. It it helps. Well, it, you, it, am, it heals the body, heals the soul. And I'm just going to assume that any unknown place is full of murder until further notice. That is true. We are in basically place full of murder. Yeah. Yes. As the two of you are talking, Meepo gormlessly opens the door. I love Meepo. Thank you, Meepo. <laughs> He's just like you're. You're saying I think I think maybe we should wait for a moment. And Meepo's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. open. <laughs> like I just hear the door opening. Go. Perhaps we can rest in here. Come on, come on. Spend a little time with friends. Meepo will sort of creep in, and uh, he'll look around, and. He'll immediately look towards the um, the e or the the west side of the um, of the shrine, and he gets very sad and very angry very quickly. You can see it on his face. Um, I've got some box text for you. Box text. Oh, we got box. First off, can anyone who is currently can any of the three of you? And I know Meepo can't um, speak or read orc. I can't. Excellent. Kretha, there is an inscription on the door as you pass through it. And the inscription says, beyond this door, the maker of death is chained. May he gnaw on his own hate until the sun dies and all things end. I read that out. All things end. Yeah, this or is absolutely- not the best at poetry, but they don't try. I this is the sort of thing that, yeah, this is absolutely sounds like the sort of door we should open before having a nap. Meepo absolutely agrees. We should totally have opened the door. This room Meepo. was once a shrine to the gods of the dwarves. The walls are carved with their dower images and a low stone altar stands at the western end of the room. Stone benches have been smashed and thrown askew and the icons of gods have been defaced with blade and feces. Gross. Atop the altar, arms folded over his chest, lies the ancient corpse of a dwarf warrior in plate armor. Bones lie heaped around the altar's base, and at its foot crouches the desiccated body of an orc in studded leather. And as the air begins to sort of rush out of this place, and the air is a little bit foul, but not foul enough to choke you, um, as, as Calder predicted, um, a couple, uh, some of the, some of the bones and some of the bodies begin to shift and Meepo, stand. If I, Meepo, if I survive this, I'm hitting you with something very big and very heavy. Meepo is not listening to you. He looks at the undead, draws his sword immediately, and has no eyes for anything but the undead. Let's That's roll initiative. <laughs> Dead. Now I regret keeping Stinky in the other room. Fortunately, we're not surprised. True. I was going to say, did, did the people in the other room roll, or is this just those the three? Like, you'll probably hear the, the the dulcet tones of Calder screen. God damn it, Meepo! <laughs> <laughs> I'd like I'd like to pitch this. I'd like to pitch this. Our entire scene took longer than whatever fight they're about to have. Hell yeah, yeah. probably. <laughs> probably. Have fun, guys. And also, given that there is still very loud hammering coming uh, from from the bottom room, I, I totally agree. 
I, that was super frustrating because I rolled a, I rolled my initiative and it rolled a twenty and then didn't register it. That's <laughs> that's been happening to you a lot that. lately. <sighs> Ain't that the most typical shit ever? Given um, the current party involved, give me just a moment to change I'm, things I'm, about I'm going a with, bit. I'm, I'm going with the thing that actually showed up. <laughs> okay. Just, oh come on. So. Um, that said, um, Stinky, being essentially a familiar, will know immediately that you are in danger. Yes. Um, it'll take him, uh, let's say, two rounds dashing to get to you. So we'll Sounds just good. say at the beginning of round three, if this hasn't been wrapped up, Stinky will show up and roll, yes. roll his own initiative. Um, Sounds what, good. What you see is as... As so, the desiccated body of the orc in leather armor stands up, and some of the bones in the northwest corner begin to stand up and up and up. This is this is not the the, the skeleton of an orc. This is not the skeleton of a dwarf or a human. This is the skeleton of an ogre. With that in mind, the first person, and I'm going to go ahead and actually remove, well. I'm not going to yet. I'm going to go ahead and roll initiative for Meepo, first off. Probably a good plan. Awesome. Up uh -huh. first is Kretha. There are only the two creatures. There's the one skeleton. Only the two creatures, yeah. Um, and uh, uh, you don't quite, you can't quite tell what the orc is. It's definitely not a zombie. It looks, it, it's, its eyes are burning with hatred rather than the sort of dull, you know, the sort of dull, um, just, just deadness of, of a zombie. Uh, Kretha, That's your turn. cool. All right. So I would like to, um, let's see here, to use a bonus action to cast Hail of Thorns. Mm-hmm. And then, so then, how do I attach that to my target? Do you put it on you, or do you put it on the target? Um, might be on me. I'm not certain. It's one of those. We'll it figure it out. It says range self, so I'm assuming it goes on myself. Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, so... Drag the effect onto you. Uh... Like the damage or the, the oh, effect. The effect. There's the icon. effect. Yeah. All right. So I've put the effect on me. Let's hope it actually works this time. Oh God, Looks please. Like oh, Kretha shouldn't be hasted anymore. Uh, I thought no. I took it off. Oh, okay. Hold on. I got you. Uh, but you also don't have to deal with the other nonsense. Uh, like the the exhaustion from the hail of thorn or from the uh from the uh the the loss of the haste because that was like a while ago. That was a while. That ago. was only one yeah. turn worth of worth of exhaustion. Okay. Um, All right. So you hit hail of thorns. Am I able to use fury of the small because it's been a little while? Oh, that's yes. once I per think day. That's once per oh, day. Once a day. Got it. It says until you finish a short or long rest. Short it does or not specifically. Yeah, it says short or long. You have not had I a short rest since the Dwerger yeah. fight. But you have had a short rest since the orc fight. When did you use it? I think I you, it you used Dwerger. it against the Dwerger. So no, it is not yeah. available to you just Okay, now. cool. That just gave me, I was just looking. Okay, so I am going to crossbow. Um, on the... Um, you have a plus two to your next d20 roll. I'm sorry, we didn't get to get those. Take the plus two. Okay, hold on. Let me. So I do that first. So yep. plus two, mm, plus two, and then uh, I guess I'm gonna hit the orc champion. Okay. And that's a eight. twenty-one. You absolutely hit. Okay, cool. And uh, so that with hail of thorns. Go ahead and roll the damage. It might do the hail of thorns automatically. Yeah, I hope so, because it should um, have to make a dexterity saving throw. Because regardless, they're definitely bigger than me. I don't actually, oh, there it goes. Okay, cool. 
So the the crossbow bolt hits, sticks into the orc champion, and barely like it it barely even notices the blow. That said, I do need to make a dex save. Um, mm -hmm. Do you happen to know what my DC is? Your DC is uh, how do I? Uh, it doesn't matter. It definitely makes it. It gets a twenty-one. It will absolutely save against your spell. Okay, half as much damage of a 1d10, okay. you're saying. So, here's the 1d10. <laughs> it's oh. one. That's fantastic. Doesn't do shit. Uh, doesn't do shit, yeah. I'm starting out so good. Now, that was... Do I get more than one attack? I yes. should get extra attack. You are, you are a ranger level five. You get a second attack when you make an attack. All right. So I'm going to basically do the same thing. So crossbow hand onto orc champion. Hits. 1d6. That's not 1d6. That's that's one. There we go. 1d6. Okay. Excellent. And then Hail of Thorns should still be going. Well, no, it's at the next time. So yeah. it's up to one minute. Though. Yeah. If you keep missing, the next hit, the next attack that hits within the one minute makes it goes off. Okay. So it sticks around until you use it. All right. So I can. He has to do another deck save then, correct? Mm, you, you you used it on the first test. Okay. Yeah. If you That's miss cool. with the attack, then you get to try again. But since you hit oh, with the okay. attack and it made I the see. save. Yeah. yeah. That's all right. That's me learning. All right. Ranger spells are cool. Yes, I have never played a ranger before, so this is definitely something that I'm having to learn. Absolutely. Uh, are you set with your turn, or are you moving at all? Uh, yeah, I'm going to move. Oh, hold on. Let me go ahead and turn off movement really quick so that you can get the arrow. There we go. Okay, I'm going to actually move uh, behind here. Would that count as cover? Uh, yes, especially given your small frame, the um, yes. the benches are enough to, to give you at least partial cover for a minus two. I'm tiny. Calder, it's up to you. What do you got? Well, first thing I'm doing is I'm using a, my bonus action to convert my darkness spell into uh, uh, spell my bonus action. Then I'm going to cast... Uh, uh, use my main action to cast Frostbite on, I guess, the Orc Champion? Sounds good. Go ahead and throw that. Uh, sure. I'm just trying to... It's not doing things correctly. Yeah, I've noticed that Fantasy Grounds has been pretty, uh, pretty laggy. It broke it with the last update, probably. Yeah, it's, it's not behaving the way it used to anymore. Flew right, too close so, to the sun. Uh, it fails right, its save. Failed the save. Egg, so egg. It will take, it's supposed to take 2d6 damage. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to apply it to it, but it's not... Uh, I'm fifth level, so it's supposed to increase the damage to 2d6, but it's not registering that as in oh. the actual spell. Interesting. When Hold you, on. I can when probably... you pick up the damage die and right-click, does it add another d6? Let me pick it up. Uh, it picks up one dive. Let me see about. Grabbing. And then when you, if you okay, hold there. it and right click, Aha. yeah. But I'm, I'm also. Oh. I think you can go in and change that. Nice. It deals yeah, seven you have to points do it manually. Damage. All right. So yeah, seven points of damage, and it gets disadvantage on. It has disadvantage on such attack. Nice. Uh, which which spell was this? Frostbite. Frostbite. Yeah. Okay. I'm really quick. Gonna go into frostbite, and I'm gonna edit it if I can. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Can I edit it? Well, I yeah, guess we can. We can. We can do that later. Anyway. Yeah, it's something to figure out later. 
Up next is Meepo, who draws his sword, hoists his shield. His sword begins to glow with divine light. Um, he will on, move Pally. one, two, three, four, five, six, and he will cast Bless um, on the three of you. Aw. So, yay! Bless. Yay, Paladin. Bless you. So I'm going to apply Bless to Meepo. I'm going to apply Bless to Calder. And I'm going to apply Bless to Kretha. And that is Meepo's turn. Um... I totally, apparently, didn't roll initiative for the NPCs. That's okay, they um, don't mean to go. So... <laughs> they were getting up. That's what they spent their turn doing, right? Assembling? Uh, so the ogre skeleton the will stand up. Um, it looks like Meepo is the closest to it. Um, so it's going to, and it has, does it have reach? It doesn't have reach. Okay, what's its, its speed is 40 feet. So it will definitely be able to like walk over the bench toward Meepo, and it's gonna bring down this massive great club um, in an attempt to to attack Meepo, who bravely raises his shield and is How's unable to deflect looking? the attack. Okay, he's at he's at full health, right? For now, and he succeeds in his concentration save. So okay. he does not uh, he does not lose concentration on the bless spell. Nice. Up next, these are people who aren't involved in the combat. The I'm orc still talking. <laughs> the orc champion will stand up and move forward. Um, he is going to get it is going to get a um, a negative to its long sword attack. So we're going to take disadvantage. I'm also going to remind uh, the player characters that the next PC roll has advantage. Um, I'm not applying that to Meepo, although I maybe I should, but I'm not gonna. Um, he didn't roll. It's going to swing its long sword with disadvantage, and Meepo is able to deflect that second attack. We are back to Kretha. What do you do? Hunter's mark on the big boy. On the on the ogre. Awesome. Okay, hold on. My uh, my map decided to go as far away from me as possible when I tried to check something so cool. So that's a fact, Hunter's Mark on the over skeleton. All right, and then uh, I shoot it again. I mean, that's it. I, I have crossbow and short sword. I am nothing but piercing damage with undead. It's, it's good, it's fine, it's great. It's totally uh, fine. Totally fine. Well, Absolutely hit it. They're not resistant to it, they're just vulnerable to bludgeoning, that's it. They're vulnerable to bludgeoning. They've been partially resisting the, things. The, the champion yeah. has definitely been resisting oh, that man. piercing damage. Well, it's the champion, I'm not talking about the skeleton. Uh, that's one. But that didn't give me the extra from Hunter's Mark, did it? Uh, I do not see the extra from Hunter's Mark, so just go ahead and roll it. How much was it again? It's a 1d6. It's a d6, d6. go ahead and roll the extra d6, and I will apply it myself. So that makes it a three, which is they, they're their crossbow bolts. I'm just going tink, tink, tink. Yeah. I am not as powerful and strong as the rest of you. Not yet. I am just small and sneaky and stinky. Oh my god. Um, attack number. Oh, I need to take a second attack. Yes, you do. I do. I do. I do. All right. So second attack on the ogre skeleton. It Not hits. Not as good, but yeah, it the hits. Bless, the bless is what did it. The bless made bless that from a, from a miss to a hit. It. Thank you, Meepo. Let's get some Meepo Thank in the you, chat. Meepo. Okay, can I please have you do damage on the ogre skeleton? Thank you. So then there's that, and then I should still have Hunter's Mark going on. Yes. So... What? That was actually it... a cocked die, but it registered yeah. as three, so we're going to... How bizarre. do you get a cocked die on a virtual platform? What is even yeah. happening? I have never Physics seen that engines. before. That was so impressive. We've we've uh, seen it all, friends. We've seen it all. That was attack number two. You got anything else for me? Uh, I don't think I do. I don't think I'm going to change my position. Excellent. So. Calder, you are up next. Cool. Um, 
bonus action going to exchange one of my level one spell slots for a, a spell point. Yay, reasons. sorcerers! Uh, and then I'm going to exchange, uh, and then I'm going to spend some of that uh, for a twinned uh, Maximilian's Earthen Grasp. I was just verifying that I could do this because it designates. It doesn't designate a creature. It designates a unit, uh, a, a, a space in in the field. Uh, I think twin spells only affect something spells. that targets a creature. Yeah, only one creature at the level at which okay, you cast them. Very well. In that case, uh, instead of into twinning that, I will uh, convert all of them into uh, all of my remaining spell points into a. Uh, no, I can't do that. I can't do conversion into a spell point and then get the bonus action to convert it into a uh, into a thing. So right, I'll you can't actually round. take a bonus action as a standard action. It's kind of yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's annoying. Uh, that said, uh, I'll just uh, use the uh, the uh, you know second verse, same as the first. Just frostbite on the champion. It actually succeeds this time. Cool. That my my action does nothing. Moving on. I is mad. Yes. Okay. Good stuff. Up next, Meepo. Meepo is going to use his last uh, spell slot to cast Searing Smite. Ooh. Yeah, I at least used my last spell slot, too. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read this really fast. The next time... Oh, it's a bonus action. So he bonus actions to, to, to cast Seer, or Searing Smite on himself. Uh, yeah. So I think I can just add this mm, yes, to please. him. The next yep. time you hit a creature with a melee weapon attack during the spell's duration, your weapon flares with white hot intensity and the attack deals an extra 1d6 fire damage and causes the target to ignite in flames. At the start of each of its turns until the spell ends, the target must make a constitution saving throw. On a failed save, it takes 1d6 fire damage. So, he's gonna go Can ahead. Can I throw something out there if you wanna know it? What's up? If he hits, he can also spend a spell slot for Divine, Divine Smite on top of that. Yes. Yeah, and Searing Smite is concentration, so he would drop Bless if he casts it. Oh, yeah. crap, you're right. So let's not do Searing so, Smite. Yeah, good, best good he just point. saves for a normal. And since we still haven't used the advantage, I'm going to go ahead and use it now. <laughs> um, thank you. I believe it was Nathaniel that gave us the advantage like forever yeah. ago, and we kept forgetting to use it. So we're going to go ahead and use it now. Come on, Nico. So Meepo is going to open, I'm gonna open his character sheet again, and we're mm. going to make that attack. Two 16s, he absolutely hits with it. Um, why did I close his sheet? We're gonna deal some damage. We're gonna start there. He does max damage with his weapon. He's going to go ahead and use that uh, level one spell slot to divine smite instead. Um, let me find that under abilities. It's 2d8. it's 2d8, but I think you get an extra d8 if the enemy is undead, it's right? It's 2d8, yeah. um, so it's 3d8, yes. So I'm just going to go ahead and roll 3d8. Again, his sword flares into white light, and he deals an extra 17 points of damage. So for just a moment, like it's hard to see anything beyond the the brilliance of Meepo's sword as he crashes it into, into this ogre, um, essentially shattering its left leg. Um, and it's the ogre, the ogre skeleton is kind of trying to keep its balance on the um, on the bench. And uh, let's apply that 17 damage. Go, little Coco! You do good! Fuck him up, me both! Um, and yeah, that, that ogre is like, like that was a massive shattering strike. Um, we're gonna go ahead and say at this time, I know it's only been one round, but we're gonna go ahead and say that Stinky is fast enough to have so gotten here. Have, like, faster. He's faster yeah. than anybody else on the board. That's, the well, that's, that's true, and with, with, his, with his long jump, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that it's cool that he got here. So I'm gonna go ahead and give him a full turn. What does Stinky do? Stinky, Stinky is going to do a charge attack uh, um, on, um, he's going to do a standing leap and a charge attack uh, at uh, the ogre skeleton and bite. So then I need to, how do I do this? I um, so do you have I, the... uh, yes melee weapon attack you also just before you put any of your attacks or anything up there take mm -hmm. um 
Hunter's Mark and drag it back onto your token. You have to put it on every time. I have to put it on every time. I don't okay. think the Hunter's Mark applies to Stinky, does it? The Hunter's Mark doesn't apply to Stinky, but if Kreetha is going to attack, then... Yes, but, okay, so actually, well, that was supposed to be on... Okay, so that's there. Yeah. And then I also need to put this onto Ogre Skeleton, and that should have gone on, right? The extra. I do see and both then... of those are on there. Are we sure that it's supposed to go on the Skeleton? I don't know. Let's see. You absolutely hit. Okay. And then, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. wait, no, come on. I need to move that yeah, sheet. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this extra hey. damage is supposed to be applied to you and not the That's enemy. fine. I, I've never been able to get this right. <laughs> That's okay. Well, and, and again, it doesn't it doesn't affect Stinky anyway. So yeah. go ahead and, and roll the damage for Stinky. And he gets extra damage because it was a charge, right? Yes. I did. Why did you not actually take the damage? There's that. Excellent. And, does a pile of damage. And then does that include, because I rolled. It's only a uh, D8. Yeah, it's 1D8 plus 5 piercing so damage. Under, and under then charge, the charge is an extra 1D6 bludgeoning damage. If you actually damage. hover over the extra 1D6 bludgeoning damage, you can pick that up and roll it onto the, the ogre. Ooh. Uh, but it doesn't actually. Oh, roll it doesn't. Anything. You're right. It, it doesn't just roll the damage. It like a... Lovely. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, that that was a thing that you were supposed to put on Stinky, and that's fine. Just go ahead and roll the d6. Learning as we go. In in what way would would Stinky like to accomplish <laughs> the thing that Stinky is currently attempting to accomplish? No copyright violations here. You... <laughs> that was a huge stretch, my dude. Beautiful. Uh, you you um hear this weird. It's like a really like like you know when Stinky is moving and hopping because it's like an oddly sticky wet sound, but it's a really thumpy sound because Stinky weighs a lot. And you see him at the door. He jumps over Calder and lands on top of. The uh, the ogre cell skeleton mouth open first and just and just the, the the ogre skeleton just disappears into the maw of Stinky. Um, I will say that after <laughs> Stinky does this, he attempts to swallow the ogre skull and begins to kind of choke, like that kind of. <laughs> oh no, he does the thing that my frog does when she when I have to feed her. Um, to be a righteous and she doesn't like them and goes and it just rolls off just of the tongue bleh. and then he goes with his leg <laughs> I love it oh, absolutely it's fantastic. fantastic I love it okay uh, back Still chatting. to the top the orc champion one second Um, is going to attempt a life-draining attack on Meepo. So we'll start with that. I mean, like, uh, it fair. Will it's hit. Kind of, it's it will kind hit of for some... So, so, so just like how Meepo's sword glowed with divine light before it hit that ogre, the champion's sword begins to glow with sort of a dark like almost sucking in light as as it stabs at Meepo. Um, it will deal a very small amount of damage. And he will get a natural 20 on the oh. saving throw. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> if, if he had failed, his maximum HP would have been reduced. Um, but uh, that didn't happen. So uh, that's it. Although... It said it was off of concentration. So that was his concentration check. Oh, that was his concentration check. Yeah, okay, so he, now he I have to make a con damage. save for him. Thank you. Mm. He keeps less, though, unless he goes unconscious. He succeeds again. Very oh, nice yeah. so far. Now this... Uh, he always is the MVP of this group. This orc does have multi-attack, but it can only use the life drain once per turn, so it's going to use a normal longsword attack for its second. And it will miss. Meepo is tanking this thing like a boss up next is Kreetha. What? <laughs> Does the map keep doing that? <laughs> okay, so Kreetha 
I will make sure that he, uh, okay, so I, I cannot cast anything else. So I can't, I can't cast anything else. I am 100% out of spell slots. All three of them. So I am just doing a regular old smackety smack uh, with the crossbow. Uh, she does small damage, but that's why she has a giant frog. Small damage is better than no damage. I hit it hits really? anyway. Yeah, yeah the, I mean this thing is not difficult to hit, right? It, it is still honestly, numbering the, up the, the blessing is definitely helping. And the blessing but, oh, is gosh. absolutely helping. The blessing is so hundred percent fantastic. All right. It's it's starting to look like a pin cushion because all of your crossbow bolts are just sticking in it. All right, second attack. I really hope I don't need to be keeping track of these crossbows. <laughs> I don't know how many I've been throwing at this I'm, dude. I'm not a huge fan of tracking ammunition. If you decide that you run out of ammunition at an inopportune time, I will totally roll with that. I gotta look and see, I can't remember. I bought I've a ton been. of ammunition, like a good chunk of my, uh, no, come on. That a good really chunk of my money went towards ammunition. In, in my rules have always been, you have a limited number of significant ammunition. Anything else is I don't care. Yeah. Um, as a side note, Highbane mentions that you can um, go to your settings and turn off auto move. Um, it's the third or fourth down in the settings. Oh, is that what keeps doing that's, my that's map? That's what keeps moving the map over to, uh, that's to you. That's never done that before, so that's fantastic. It's so good. Um, is uh, Prefa doing anything other than shooting? Uh, no, because she's in a good spot. I mean, she's safe. Um, out of curiosity, I'm looking at your abilities. Turn off auto move where? I'm looking at your feats really quick. Oh, you have crossbow mm -hmm. expert and not sharpshooter. I keep mixing those two up. Okay, cool. Up next yeah, is Calder. Okay. Uh, I think I'm just going to now convert my, I'm gonna use meta magic uh, to burn three of my five spell slots. Uh, to uh, do a heightened uh, uh, Maximilian's Earthen Grass to give him disadvantage on the save. Lovely. So you're going to heighten it. Um, go ahead and hit the disadvantage button before you force the save. It fails. Cool. Uh, it is now restrained. All right. I'm applying that right now. And I will throw the damage at it. Uh, and it, yeah, it has to make a oh. strength save on it. In order to break the restraint, it must make a succeed, uh, use its action to succeed at a strength save on its turn uh, against disadvantage. Nice. Now, if it's restrained, um, I'm, I'm just remembering what restrained actually means. Um, it You get advantage against, or attacking it. Yeah. Uh, its speed is zero, attacks against the creature have advantage, the creature's attack rolls have disadvantage, and the creature has disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. Perfect, excellent, wonderful, fantastic. Are you doing anything else now that this and, thing, uh, so so the earth and grass bursts out of the ground. Now, normally this is stone floor, but the, 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 the floor is so cracked and messed up that the earth and grasp is able to erupt out of the ground and grab the orc champion in a giant fist. Um, are you doing anything else with your turn? Uh, that is my that is my action. So uh, I'll use my bonus action to convert, just in case, uh, another one of my uh, level one spell slots into a spell point. Okay, sounds good to me. I am I am trusting that you are keeping good and accurate. I have, um, uh, I have uh, I am uh, I've converted a total of uh, four spells into. Uh, uh, into uh, into spell slots. Uh, sorry, four, three, four spell points worth of, out of spell slots. So. Sorcerers are bonkers. Um, yeah. So Meepo, who, by the way, would get advantage on this next attack anyway because of pack tactics, but um, Meepo is, is, now that he's got advantage, he actually, hmm, he, sh he now, that, now that this thing is captured in the grasp, he sheaths his short sword, drops his shield, and pulls Shatter Spike. Um, and uh, with Shatter Spike, he will, with advantage, take an attack. 
Uh, let's see. Actions. A natural 20? Oh, baby. I'll we'll take it. Uh, with a magical weapon, which should bypass the, uh, the res although I think the resistance is only piercing, but we're about to find out. Amazing, absolutely spectacular. So we're gonna go... Ten points of damage. It says it was partially resisted. Hold on. Yeah, it's been partially resisting. Like, uh, it it resists that aren't from non-magical attacks that aren't silvered. Okay, so this is yeah. wrong. Um, it should have taken the entire ten. So uh, I'm gonna have to change Meepo's uh, stats to give him that magic. But for now, yeah. I'm just adding the extra five damage. Uh, this thing is heavily injured. Uh, stinky. Bite. <laughs> That's basically what Stinky's gonna do. He's just, he's gonna, it, it's a bite, but what he's doing is basically hitting it. With this, with Absolutely. This Take the attack. Okay. Alrighty. Bite on you. Amazing. Absolutely hits. It turns <laughs> out when the enemy's restrained, it gets really easy to hit. <laughs> it's really easy to hit. I hold and you punch. <laughs> Not a very good punch, though. Not particularly, but that's okay. Um, and since since that uh, piercing he didn't, damage, since he, he didn't, didn't silver uh, your frog, <laughs> you didn't silver your frog's teeth. <laughs> no, I should think about that next time. Stinky may let me. Uh, the orc champion is not going to attempt to break free. It's just going to go ahead and take its multi attack against Meepo. Um, it's gonna at disadvantage. at disadvantage. <laughs> it's gonna attempt to do its life draining attack first. Oh, I guess I picked up the long sword, so it's gonna do the long sword attack first. It absolutely misses. It's very difficult to maneuver when you're gripped in a giant earthen fist. It's gonna attack a second time with its life drain attack, and it will not get the twenty that it rolled. It will instead roll a two, and it will miss both times and remain in the earth and grasp. It is Kretha's turn. All right. You get advantage. Hey, maybe you'll crit and do normal damage. I get advantage? You do get advantage, it yes. So hit the advantage button before you pick up your attack. And okay. remember to give yourself your plus d6 as well. Oh, How do yeah. I give myself? Apply. Wait, why would I give myself plus d6? Hunter's because mark. you have Hunter's Mark this guy, right? I hunters marked the other dude who is now dead. I never hunted. You can hunter take marked. a bonus action to shift your hunters mark to the new guy. Can I? Yes. 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 So long okay. as you are still concentrating on hunters count mark. As a new thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I, if I had realized that I would have hunter marked him last time, oh, I good. thought that because he. All right. Go ahead so, and apply the d6 to yourself. So hunters mark goes on, or champion. No, right? goes on yourself. Goes on you. Oh, it goes on me, not... Oh. Yeah. Just, okay. That's not confusing in the slightest. I know. It's not confusing I know. in the slightest. Fantasy we could, Ground. we could, we could, we could probably figure some stuff out, but I haven't had time to mess around with the code of Fantasy Grounds. That Take your attack so with advantage. Sense. All right. Attack on you. Ooh, Another crit. Fuck yeah. Fuck A chance up. for you to do normal damage instead of half. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that damage! Oh! So it did partially resist, but remember, the Hunter's Mark damage is doubled as well because it is a die. So yes, you deal um, you deal nine points of damage to it because it cut, gets cut in half, uh, rounded down. Look at those 20s fly. I absolutely agree. You do some serious damage to it. Take your second shot. All right. So do it again. Remember yeah, to put the like Hunter's to... Mark back on you. Yeah, put the Hunter's again. Mark on you again. Oh my again. God, I have to do it each time? Yeah, it expires after one throw, even oh, though the, uh, the Hunter's Mark can last for hours. That's I think so it's good. so oh, that you can so delineate good. whether or not you're actually hitting the target that's marked or not. Yeah, Like, okay. if you take a bonus action to hit someone else, it doesn't automatically apply it. That's fair. Okay, Hunter's Mark. And then uh, I don't have advantage on this one, though, do you I? You do, because it is still restrained. And in fact, you don't have to actually, you don't actually have to say advantage. It will do it automatically because it's restrained. So if you just make an attack, 
it'll it'll do it. Oi! Another, Another 20. 20. <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> Amazing! I am wow! Absolutely fantastic! Look at all those dice fly. Um, Maximilian's earth and grasp is doing work. What, I think that was uh, a little too much. How does how does so this good. go? How uh, how does this go, Kretha? This is well, the second you kill you get to describe. Two, one, two. Um, he don't he doesn't have eyes. Well, I mean, he has it eyes. He does but definitely have eyes, and those eyes. eyes are absolutely burning with hatred. That would be where the the each each bolt hits one after the other. One strike into one eye, one strike into the other eye. You've made it's an inquisitor. Just... Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> you can leave the stuff there, though. So it's just chink, chink, and then she yells at Calder. This is a good time. You'll be able to nap real well after this. <laughs> And it falls over. Meepo, the, the glow on Meepo's sword sort of fades and, and goes out. He stands over the undead, turns back to Calder, and immediately gives sort of a sheepish apologetic look. Uh, the uh, Calder will look initially a little annoyed. The giant earthen hand will gently flick. Uh, meepo on the back of the head, and then will be dissipated. <laughs> it's like it's very, but and, uh, as soon as he's fat, he, like Calder will smile. You both did yeah. so well. Look at this place. It, it's. Uh, it's so I will call back here. behind us. There was violence. It's done now. This is about the same time that Laura is like. I have no idea where they went. <laughs> We're over here. Still can't Not like hear you guys like just completely missed like Stinky and everything. Well, Stinky is a frog. Like they see, they saw that Stinky yeah. got up and 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 jumped away. But like, who knows oh, what that means? I was like, huh? Where's Stinky going? I don't know. I I literally can't see that far. Charlie <laughs> hears them, but like trust that they're okay from the tone it's of Calder's voice. <laughs> You're eating horribly chewy monster things. It's fine. <laughs> Horrible mouth sounds. So, so I'm going to investigate the altar and everything. Absolutely. I've decided that I'm taking a short rest and I I'm don't going know to, what people are doing. I'm going to use a, um, a the cantrip for minor illusion. Uh, let's see what the range on that is. I believe it's decent. Uh, yeah, 30, 30 feet. 60 feet. I'm gonna like uh, so like the area outside of the door is within thirty feet. I'm going to conjure an illusion of a sign with an arrow pointing at this room, uh, and then go back and not, then and then go further that inside. That's not a investigate. What are you doing, you crazy? Okay, roll. Okay, there we go. You find a parcel with a couple of scrolls in it and a <gasps> big pile of gold. You also, oh. once again, find the corpse of Durgadin. Um, the plate armor that he's he's been, um, when I say buried, I mean buried in the bones of his enemies. Um, and it's 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 full plate, but it's it's rusted and, and bent up and and clearly has seen better days as it as it took many, many, many blows from axes and, and swords uh, before he fell. Like now that you're looking around, you can tell that at least a dozen enemies died to Durgadin's blade before he was finally overwhelmed, and and he he still lays where he made his last stand. Um, you find so, two spell scrolls oh, yeah. and some gold, both of which I am putting into the party inventory. Don't put it into the party thing yet, because I'm going to turn Kretha, uh, Kretha turns to uh, Meepo and called her and go, this was just us, so we should just be us. So how about uh, we? I will we just I, put this around ourselves because Kreta, look, look how good you did. Look Kreta, how good Meepo did. Kreta, yeah. No, that this is not yes. how that works. Yes, it is. They did not fight. Okay, they were, they were being all emotional. Let me put it this way: I have the ability to conjure a fireball, and I say it's not how we do things. Please no. We sh everyone it's share and share alike. Between the three of us, we get the, the, the pay. I might be pissed at Laura. I'm not going to. 
how this works. But I'm not going to cheat anybody. How is it cheating? She's not here. <laughs> I will uh, I will then turn to the right and just let out a, a long piercing whistle of Oi, nerds. Um I, I think we're they're not calling good us. at this. You need to learn better. They can call us with our names. We yeah. have them. Because, Calder, you are a sorcerer and thus able to read any spell scroll that uh, sorcerers can cast, you know that one of them is a scroll of spider climb and one of them is a scroll of web. Neat. Those are actually, those would be really good spells for Charlotte, our wizard, to learn. I already have one of them. Yes, but I'm not going to tell Kreetha that right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. So you all, I mean, you all come together. You must, you must, you must. Charlotte, Charlotte, I found the I found a dwarven grave. You might want to check it out. Okay, stop being so fucking loud. <laughs> Never met a tiefling who did not understand how this works. So I, I am not. Your it's all right. Tiefling. I'm not mad. I'm, I'm gonna. Just I'm gonna actually finish my short rest over by the fire. Awesome. I'm because I'm, like I actually have to take it. I will look yeah. at Kreetha very calmly and very patiently and say, I am devil-born, not demon-born. I keep my word. All right, whatever keeps you asleep at night. In fact, we should nap, and then we should do what we need to do. And she literally turns around, and Stinky comes over here, and she lays on top of Stinky, and she's taking her fucking rest. <laughs> Uh, and in yeah. fact, uh, so Lore is currently at the fire. Um, <laughs> that said, the shrine does provide a decent place with two doors that are close to each other and easily um, either alarmed or locked or something along those lines. Um, you do know that the common room that you're in right now is one that is used by the, uh, the Grey Dwarves, and you actually don't see any... Um, indication. Oh, wait, I should probably make a roll for this. Oh, well, I already yeah. started saying it. Um, you don't really see any indication that the, the Grey Dwarves have come to this place. Um, all of the defacing and all of the old, like, like fecal matter on the walls and stuff is, is probably orc and definitely ancient. Like, ew, fossilized poop smeared on the walls. As Charlotte comes into the room with a hand on the wall being like, hey, someone called for me. <laughs> Ew. Hey Charlotte, I will say I will say Charlotte over my, toward my voice. We found Durgadin. I'm pretty sure. <gasps> Charlotte is in history nerd mode and like comes on in and. Uh, what? Well, Call will walk over like take Charlotte's hand to gently guide her toward the place and describe the scene as best he can. Uh, Charlotte, give me a history check and take advantage because you love dwarves and can speak it. Yep. And while we're in a pause, Kistrel, hi, good to see you. Glad that you're here. Thank you for the toss a coin. In general, we will be doing thanks like at breaks, but I want to, you know, since we're in a middle of a bit of a lull, I wanted to say thank you very much and thank you to everyone who is watching. Um, so just as a side note, since we're in a lull and we're doing this break real quick, um, how many of those toss coins got put in that parcel? Uh, none. I'm going to add more to your party inventory. How many do we have currently? We have five. Okay, and each one is 10 gold, so I'm going to say that's an extra 50, so 332. Okay, I have added the extra toss of coins to, um, to the, the party inventory. Thank you for letting me know. Go ahead and erase those from the list. Uh, is Lore going to be joining folks in the shrine, or is she staying by the fire? Um, they can come out and get me. Yeah, I mean, Swoops is still out there. Yeah, we're fine. So the two of them on watch. I needed to take a bad. short rest before we got into this room, so... Kreetha's snoring. <laughs> Charlotte is feeling over the engravery, the engravings on Durgadin's armor and, like, reading the runes that are on there, and she's asking Calder to describe, like the arrangement of murals on the wall and like she's just nerding out <laughs> this is so with with your history check uh that you gave which was a 20 by the way not a natural 20 but a 20 20 um you get a few things one um the armor is definitely of historical value even though it's not magical um 
it's hard in certain places to tell what's a rune and what's a, a rend from, you know, from an axe. You definitely know that some information has been lost off of the armor because it was doing its job. Um, and as Calder is describing the scene to you, you can almost see in your mind him standing on top of the altar with a sea of orcs around him, laying waste to them. Um, what you don't see is a weapon. You see his armor, you see him there, you see, well, you, you feel, uh, and, and, and the bodies all around are described to you, and you can, you can, you can see in your mind's eye him just, just laying waste to the orcs and ogres around him and finally being pulled down by sheer numbers, um, but you definitely don't see the great axe that you would expect to be around here somewhere. They clearly desecate, desecrated the room after he died and then sealed it. So I don't, I mean, I wouldn't put it past them to take the axe. Unless, I mean, Meepo, Calder, do you guys want to help me look for an axe, maybe? It got shoved somewhere, or...? Well, there were some undead things that if there was anything that was going to be wielding, a, any magical weapon left here, it would have been one of them. Meepo's doing an odd thing. Meepo is praying. Good. Who's Meepo praying to? Uh, who speaks Draconic? I do now. I do. Um... He's he's sort of mumbling. Um, so I'm gonna say that at this time you don't get a you don't get a you don't get the deity uh, unless you ask him directly. And I haven't actually chosen a deity for him yet. Um, <laughs> but but as a paladin, it seemed like, like the thing to do. Uh, given his options in Faerun, it's either going to be Tiamat or Bahamut for knowing me both. So. That's true. And so if I recall properly, Bahamut. <laughs> Tiamat is evil and bahamut evil. is is the good one yeah good. so uh, it's, yep. it's almost it's certainly good. bahamut yes it's almost certainly bahamut it's but it's also like a little grainier than that because tiamat while evil has a like has a recognized religion people try to appease her whereas bahamut is like lar largely has a religious adherence but doesn't really have a church Fair enough, but as as a glory oath paladin, I think Bahamut is is yeah. definitely the uh, the more appropriate a stronger choice. choice. Yeah, he's um, a stronger choice for me, certainly. I am willing at this time, after asking you what your preparations are, since uh, Kretha is already like fast asleep, uh, I am I am willing to to grant a long rest in this uh, in this shrine. Um, with the possibility of a random encounter, depending on how well you uh, secure yourselves, if that's a thing oh. you want to do. Do we uh, do we get a do we get a short rest off get, before having to decide can, yes. if we're going to barricade? You'll get a short rest either way. Okay. So you can go ahead and I'll go ahead and apply the short rest. Although I'm not going to apply the short rest if a long rest is coming, because there's no point in spending hit um, dice if you're apply just going to heal. Rest it. to my character. Uh, if I I'm going to be. A little weird here, because uh, I'm going to uh, uh, now that I have some meta magic available to me, I am going to take advantage of the uh, uh, the ring being slightly lighter than it was last time around, and because I because I spent one of the spells already. Uh, really quick, would you would you be so kind as to uh, because some folks are the first time here? Uh, would you be so kind as to describe for us um, the ring and uh, what it does? Um, it is. I was never given a description of what the of what its physical dimensions ring are. Of spell story, I think it's. He said it was gold and platinum, kind of yes. intertwined. Yeah, uh, and as a, it is a ring of spell storage. So it is a magical it is a magical ring that allows to store uh, up to five levels worth of spells within it. And in a party uh, full of casters, that's a pretty damn nice, yeah. uh, pretty damn nice that's, thing. And I have done further research into it, and uh, it does use the original spell save DCs of the original caster of who shoved the magic into the spe uh, into the uh, ring. Uh, but the person who invokes the ring does count as the caster of the spell for the purposes of meta magic. That's so uh, cool. 
So, so I can metamagic spells that are in the ring, or I can store a metamagic spell within the ring. I just have to follow the normal rules of metamagic, so I can't double up on any metamagic effect. Um, quick question for Jen. Is this yes. ring, and you can, you can say yes or no, because the ring was found in yeah. the gullet of the roper, is this ring something that was owned by one of your um, party members, or is it a thing that was in there before your party got there? All right, well, odds, yes, even no. <laughs> <laughs> that is an even, no. so no, it was it was in there already. Never seen it before in her life. Excellent. Just checking She's not in. looking at it now, she is unconscious. Well, I mean, yes. <laughs> I'm, uh, uh, so I'm going to spend the, uh, uh, the sanctuary spell to no effect, and I'm going to use my remaining before the long rest. I'm going to use the remaining of the uh, my of my spell points to place a, a heightened Maximilian's earthen grasp into the ring because that serves me well. Um, nice. Let's have someone, M. You've been keeping a lot of notes for us, but let's have someone uh, note down the the stuff that's in the ring. Uh, Gail, can you uh, can you take care of that? I have it on my character notes for my sheet. Right now it has a, notes. a feather fall. It has a feather fall, a spider climbing, and now a Maximilian's Earth and Grass Titan. Excellent. Yep. Wonderful. Fantastic. A nice way to preserve some of your meta magic points uh between or before rests. Yeah. Anything else you so, want to do before um you either wake up Kretha or take a long rest? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to send a message out to Lore once we get that, like, hour-long short rest out of the way. Yeah. Um, being like, hey, do you want to come in here so we can rest longer? Or are we going to try to head out soon? I was thinking Even we should head us. out now. Want to come in here and talk about it? Yeah, I guess. I will. I'll walk into this room and then notice that there's shit everywhere and go. I changed my mind about being in this room. <laughs> oh, okay. He just Charlotte follows her and just stands out in the the hallway. It like it smells like I. It doesn't smell like feces. This is smell it. This is ancient. Like well, okay. So fair enough. <laughs> they killed something in there. I can smell it, which is bad. And, like, I was kind of worried because I hadn't seen any, like, toilet or, like, shit walls before, but, like, found it. <laughs> um, God. is there any sort of, like, during the hour-long rest when we were in there and Charlotte was looking over Durkinen's stuff on his personage, is there any sort of, like, bracelet or armband or something that a smaller bit of the armor that she could potentially take for now as um, proof. You'll go ahead and find a gauntlet Yeah. that bears okay. his mark on the back of the hand. I will carefully take it off of the hand, leaving as much of the hand there as possible, say a quick dwarven prayer and promise in dwarven that I'm bringing this back. I just need it for proof. I, I'm, I'm sure you understand business. I will return it and tucks it away in her stuff. Um, yeah, so I was thinking that if we go now, then, like, the, dwar the, the dwarves when we walked in were, like, doing, like, dinner or something. I'm figuring night cycle sleep. So less likely to get, like, backdrafted. And also, if Truth is asleep... I guess if, if Calder wants to come too, then, like, you know. But if not, then, like, sleeping at the same time as whatever's around here is going to sleep less likely to get attacked. Yeah, and, and Charlotte kind of beckons everyone over of the... Well, we got what we came for, right? Did I we? mean, yeah, basically. We, we have a map of the yep. forge. We have proof of the forge that's mm -hmm. what we were sent for right we were basically we have not we have not laid eyes on the forge we hear a forge not the forge there's only one forge here 
That's Durgadin's body right over there. I think this is the oh, forge. I, I, I very much believe that this is the fort that it's on the side of the forge we're looking for, but we have no idea if it's intact. They're working in oh, it. Oh, I'm sorry. Are we gonna are we gonna only partially trust the the dwarves that we threatened their entire lives to this to the point where they like literally ran away from us and they I said, Oh yeah, it's that guy's forge? I don't know what they've done to it. I don't know what any previous occupants have done to it. I don't know what these people did to it. I'll just your houses. I don't know. Okay, know so you that can they, stay that here. That's been sitting there fine. We don't need years. you. Um, you know, people are so loud. What, yeah, I'm I'm sorry, Calder, but we weren't sent here to, like, assess it as craftspeople. We were sent here to find it and scout it out. If we were sent here to assess it as craftspeople, then we would have hired craftspeople to come with us. I think we have enough. Yeah. I'm not convinced. Okay, well, that's fine. You don't have to be convinced. You can stay here by yourself and with Kreetha, I guess. Um, we'll leave. We'll go tell King Barnabas that, he, that this place is here and stuff, and he can decide what he wants to do with it. I mean, it, what more do you think we could? Well, there's a bunch of problems that we still need to assess here, regardless. The Durgar for one, uh, the, the Durgar for one, the dragon for another. We don't know what either of those will do to affect the. We the also of this have place. gotten the basic principles of what we were coming here to do. Done. It's done. If we wanted to do bonus extra, like optional quest, we could. But honestly, I want to go home. Actually, you know what? How about this? I'll take Calder's, uh, Calder, I'll take Clarion's bones. I'll go bury him instead of hypothetically, if, you know, we go get murdered by a dragon, leaving them here. Um, go talk to the king that gave us this whole ass quest. And then he can decide if he wants to ride a hog, or, like you know, head over heels over here, to to flush it out, or if he's like, I'll give it some time, or hey, do you want to come along? Because I might change my mind. But like right now, I want to see my kid, I want to see my spouse, and um, I'd like to give my partner an actual burial. Should we part ways here? is like waking up and like <laughs> I don't want to leave this work half done and okay, I don't cool. I'm also like not I convinced said. we can, I'm also not convinced we can leave the way we came in no there's that other door like they, they left like an hour and a half ago they are probably not the sneakiest motherfuckers in the world I'm sure we can follow them plus Kreetha knows like has told us the way out already so it's not like it's going to be super difficult I, I think we should make copies of yeah, we'll the, copies the map and info that we got from, what was his name? Gerard, Gerald? The, the Great Dwarf. Um, we'll take one. Go take it to Barnabas and you all will have a copy and if you want to make more detailed additions to it, you can. Are you seriously talking about splitting up? Don't you know you never split the party? You can come with us. That's cool, too. I mean, I could, but I am not... This is not I a decision not... to make now. We are all spent. We are all exhausted. I'm, I'm actually pretty good, to be honest. Yeah, yeah not helping that. Uh, and bo and the last, and both of the last two fights certainly would help that. I am not part of this. I don't know why you have said why you're here. And I do understand that you may be complete. I not necessarily complete. I would not like to see you leave. But if you must, you must. I did not think I would like you as much as I have, even, even as angry as you are. There's something 
goblin ish about all of you. And it. I don't think that that is a compliment. Soul. Thank you, though. I understand. I... You are very hurting. And it is very hard. Meepo has been looking more and more distressed <laughs> as this conversation has proceeded. But he doesn't volunteer. No. He doesn't volunteer anything. He doesn't speak up. But he definitely looks nonplussed or plussed, whichever one is the one that means bad. <laughs> they both do. They um, both do. Well, it means he's distressed. Um. Hey, uh, Calder, are you going to give me Clarion's bones, or are you going to hoard them like a dragon? I'll grab, well, take the bag that I've been carrying. Uh, carrying bones, Laura. If you're going to, uh, I, I say this with all due affection, fuck directly off as I hand her the bones. I hope I never see you again. You, you've got your, your husband, copy? You, your spouse is a better person than you. Enjoy. And with that, <laughs> the party with will- With that, we are all- <laughs> With that, the party will go its separate ways. We are going to go ahead and take a 10 minute break. Um, it is 7.45. We will come back at 7.55. And we will see if we can unfuck this clusterfuck. Oh, no. What do you mean, never split the party? Come on. <laughs> Lame. So. I love you. Am I love you. <laughs> never mind that she literally just split the party. <laughs> I mean, she, she's not good at taking her own advice. It's true. Okay. We can have that conversation later. Yes. We're going to go ahead and take a quick 10 minute break. Folks, thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate everyone who has been hanging out with us. Um, we are nowhere near done yet. So if you stick around for the next 10 minutes and then we will come back and there will be more game. Uh, believe it or not, the uh, the campaign is not over as a result of these uh, as a result of these uh, these events. So thank you very much for being here so far. We'll see you in 10 minutes. Oh my God.